I'm not about the money. I don't do stuff commercially. I'm about promoting a different past we've had. A past filled with uh, advanced civilizations. I'm Julie Ryder. I'm here at the Sage Wall with Dr. Sam from Bosnia. Discovered this wall a few years ago when I kept hearing rumors about this incredible wall at Sage Mountain Center. But when we came here to first see it, we were told over and over and over again, no, this is just natural. The geologists have been here. This is just a normal wall that just occurred naturally. However, the reason we know that this has been intentionally constructed is granite does not split in 90 degree consistent corners, angles. You see all the 90 degree angles here. The polygonal stone that moves in between the angles to make this a smooth wall covered with geopolymer concrete at one time. This is granite. Granite does not split at 90 degree angles. It's also extremely consistent and symmetrical. We know that it's about 275 feet long, but it extends under the dirt on up. There are crystals in the Mineral Museum in Butte which were found in this area. The crystal is about so high, one crystal point. Crystals is part of the technology of the ancient civilizations. It helps create the energy. I brought many people here. This is on private land. Sage Mountain Center is a retreat center, completely off the grid, with gardens, with um, beautiful labyrinths, cabins, and this is on their land. It's under good hands. When I first came here, it was covered with dead trees and branches. And after I insisted that this was a cyclopean wall, that it was constructed, within the next week, they come and cleared all the trees so that they broomed it so that people can come here. There's a beautiful trail coming up the mountain that's completely marked. So it's private property. If you want to come here, you need to contact the Sage Mountain Center, get permission, and then you have a self-guided tour. Come yourself. Um, I've also brought a shaman here from um, Colombia who played crystal bowls and, and did some beautiful shamanic journeys here. We've done many a ceremony of using corn pollen and flowers and ceremonies from all different types of cultures, Native American, Mayan, South African, and this becomes a ceremonial ground and because of the energies in these walls, people see visions together. So we love Sage Mountain Wall because it's protected, one of the few places that are protected. And there cannot be any controlled burns here because it's private land. Um, it is not open for, uh, for sale, for bartering. It's private land and it's protected. And that's about the only site that we know of that's completely protected this way. Uh, the largest block here, they tell me is about 50 tons but Dr. Sam is, will measure it more accurately. So this is Julie Ryder, the Montana Megalist. I'm at Sage Wall above Sage Mountain Center. Hi, my name is Dr. Sam Osmanagic. I'm the megalithic and pyramid sites researcher all over the planet. 
I'm the, the discoverer of the Bosnian pyramids, the largest and the oldest on the planet. And we have proven that Bosnian pyramids are actually energy amplifiers. And a matter of fact, that's what most of the megalithic and pyramid sites were built for, to amplify the energies. The new time is coming, 21st century. We need new sciences, the pyramid science, the megalithic science that will prove that those sites were not built for the religious ceremonial purposes, to sacrifice the enemies, or to be tombs. Today I have a great pleasure to be in a company with uh, Julie Ryder here in the great state of Montana. We are at the Sage Mountain and she is one very enthusiastic, open-minded researcher who combines the physical and spiritual reality. Without that combination we cannot find answers to any serious and old megalithic site. Behind me is what uh, she named the wall, the artificial wall, since we are in Sega Mountain, Sega Wall, right? Sage Wall. Sage Wall, sorry, Sage Wall. Now, there is a big question. If this wall is artificially made or if it is a natural occurrence. I will come to that. And before that, I want to show some of the measurements that I have done today. When I go to different sites, I take 10, 15 instruments, today a little bit less, but nevertheless, we're going to see some results. This is October, unusually beautiful, nice and hot weather here in Montana. So, temperature 54 to 57 degrees. Temperature changes while you are here at the wall, which is also interesting. Humidity, the same thing. It goes anywhere from 34 to 43.5 percentage humidity. Weather is sunny, visibility excellent. Now, the first measurements I did was with this instrument right here. It's called air ion counter. It measures the concentration of the ions. Ions can be negative and positive. Negative ions are good for us. Why? Because they clear the atmosphere from the dust, smog, pollen, microbes. They clean our bodies as well. Now, the concentration of negative ions at this place was between 400 and 600. It's nothing spectacular. In our homes it's about 20, 30 or 50 negative ions per cubic centimeter. In the cities about 100 to 150. At the mountains anywhere from 300 to 1000. So this is something that you would expect in this beautiful forest. Positive ions, they oscillate anywhere between 300 and 1000. So if you want to have a healing effect then you have to have many negative ions more than positive. This is not the case. So this is not the place where the healing ceremonies were done. The next measurement with this meter, this is EMR meter, that one picks up on uh, EM smog if it is not healthy, the place not healthy to be. Or Now this is very good if you have a lot of appliances, a lot of technology, tablets, cell phones, computers, routers, microwaves, TVs, and you will see that this instrument works like crazy. It goes from green to yellow and then to red. Not good. Here the values are always at zero, meaning very nice, calm place to be. The next one this is a EMF, it measures uh, several frequencies, for example, it measures magnetic field, you see how it is in green, it measures electrical field, green, RF, radio frequencies 0.00. .00. 
again proving very nice place very pleasant place to spend time now this cool instrument is called experimental life energy meter it is based on the work of American medicine medical doctor William Reif from 100 years back William Reich invented an instrument to measure organ energy, organ meter, or life energy, or in Eastern traditions, Tibet, India, China, called prana or chi. So, with this instrument, you can say how what is the level of our vitality, of our life energy and uh, it works on a scale from 0 to 100 for example let me turn it on it's about 20 on a scale from 0 to 100 you come to the wall it's about 30 meaning that the wall has a higher level of the life energy than the surrounding area meaning that something fills it up with the energy humans we can check that see here I'm at 90 you can also check put the other hand below 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 you are 85 almost 90 so this is the difference between living beings and uh, stones but being at 30 again very pleasant higher than the ground the ground is at 20 also I measure the ultrasound ultrasound basically here there is no signal no signal I measure the infrasound very very deep sounds it's very busy something is happening inside what's happening I don't know but it's the indication that something is happening now I'm coming to maybe the most interesting stuff and that's the orientation of this wall the orientation is not north-south to be exact the orientation is northwest southeast northwest 350 degrees southeast 135 degrees people think that uh, during uh, major days like summer solstice the sun rises east well, not true. The sun rises uh, northeast. They think uh, in the winter time, winter solstice, again it is east. No, it is southeast. And uh, during the sunset, in the summer, summer solstice, it is uh, southwest, winter northwest. And this is the orientation of this wall, northwest southeast, meaning it is oriented towards the winter solstice. Why is that the case? Not quite sure. We are in the northern hemisphere. People would uh, usually follow the summer solstice when they would orient their megalithic sites. This one is different. For some reason, winter solstice was more important for those who were here with this wall which brings me to the major question if this is artificial or natural when you see the material this is grey granite grey granite when it comes in a big veins granite veins of course it never comes like what we have here you have big it's 50 or 100 feet in height, one piece. People then go there, they cut it, if they have proper tools. Granite is one of the hardest materials in nature. On a mock scale from 1 to 10, granite is at 6.5. When archaeologists and uh, officials archaeological institutes, universities and so on talk about the pastimes 
they always mention that until a couple of thousand years back the only available tools were copper tools. However, copper is very soft. On mock scale from 1 to 10, copper is at 3. So, hardness of copper and hardness of granite, huge difference. Granite is much more superior. And if you make copper tools, even if they are hardened, they will never be able to shape, to cut granite. That's why when people talk about Egypt and unfinished obelisk in Aswan, where we also have granite, claiming that uh, they cut it with the copper tools, it simply does not work that way. Today we use diamond tools to cut granite, because diamond is a little bit more harder and superior comparing to the granite. So now we have a huge challenge. If this is an artificial wall, who had tools, who had such advanced abilities to cut it? The next question, of course, is the transportation. Even if you have a natural granite outcrop here, you still need to cut, to lift. What we see here are the five rows, five rows, and they are not a result of the erosion. How many rows below? Probably at least five more, because when you go on the other side, you can compare the height of these five rows, probably another four to five are below us. So now we have ten rows, ten levels of granite blocks. This was a huge challenge. When it comes the way how they connect to each other, some of the granite blocks are four-sided, four corners. Some are rectangular, some are almost square. But there are some blocks that have more than four corners, more than four sides. And you are right there. They are called polygonal blocks. And a matter of fact, the very reason why we are standing here is the block that's behind us. Let's analyze this block. No. This block starts from here. The first corner. Go to the left. The second one. Third one. Fourth one. Place where two blocks above it means it's the fifth corner. Number six, number seven, eight, nine. Wednesday, odd number. So we have nine corners. But the nature of course does not make blocks which are polygonal and rather regular. the precise measurements the length at the base 490 centimeters or 16.2 feet the height 320 centimeters 10.5 feet and the thickness you need to go from the back it's 195 centimeters or 6.5 feet the volume is 1,105 cubic feet or, or 30.5 cubic meter and we add the specific weight of the granite it's close to 3 the mass of this block 30.5 times 3 is 91 ton now, 91 ton that's uh, amazing megalithic block. The word megalith is coming from two Greek words. Mega, big, block, uh, 
lithos is a block of stones, or big stones, big blocks. Everything above one ton is considered megalith. Here we have 91. Wow, this is huge. If this was shaped, transported, and lifted, this is one of the wonder on our planet. Not important just for the state of Montana. And when we see that we have all of them of different sizes, it reminds us of sim similar megalithic walls in Peru, Easter Island, Mexico, Egypt, Croatia, Bosnia, Montenegro, and other places. The last window for the megalithic civilization was between five and eight thousand years. For example, in southern England, we have Avery stone circles, we have Stonehenge, we have many other places, Karnak in France, we have uh, Anand Shag or Alestenar in Sweden, Rujman here in Israel, and so on and so forth. So we have, that, that was the last megalithic window. Before this one, we've had several. Some of them are going over 100,000 years, which brings me to the dating of this wall, if made by intelligent hands. And I would use that term, made by intelligent hands. On the American soil, we have had several advanced civilizations, much older than the white European settlers or American Indians. Among them, we have civilizations who built mounds everywhere in the U.S., from the pyramids in Cahokia National Park to Ohio Serpent Mound, showing that they were able to maneuver with millions tons of material. But this is something else, different distinctive construction. It goes much, much deeper in the path. How deep? Hard to say. I would say it's much older than the end of the last ice age, which is about 11,700 years. But then at that time, Montana was probably under thick layer of ice. As a matter of fact, in the last 100,000 years, this thick layer of ice was pretty much in the northern U.S., what we have U.S., in Canada, northern Europe, northern Asia, and so on. Does it mean that it was older than 100,000 years? I don't know. I cannot say that because at this moment, who and when are open questions. But when it comes to the question, why and how, it seems that somebody was able to shape the granite with advanced technology, to lift it with the advanced transportation means, to orient it to the movement of the sun, and when it comes to usage, unfortunately, this wall is energetically quiet today. What was its purpose? Hard to say. But this place has to be heavily and systematically researched. I think we should be able to find many more interesting sites. And uh, it will be challenging because the question is where the archaeology stops and where the geology 